Hello and a very warm welcome to our New Year special edition of World 360. I'm Akanksha Swaroop. Now the year 2022 saw a spate of events that took the world by surprise, from war to protests, from fire to flood. Here's the list of key events that shocked and rocked the world in the year gone by. On February 24th this year, the world witnessed the beginning of a new war with Russia launching an unprecedented military assault of Ukraine by land, air and sea. What followed was bloodshed, large-scale devastation and damage and loss. There have been fears of nuclear plants being misused and nuclear weapons being used. The global impact was recorded via spikes in gas prices and even high levels of inflation. Russia's President Vladimir Putin categorized the invasion as a military exercise while Ukraine's president gained global popularity with his determination to stand by the people of Ukraine and not evacuate when given the chance to. Since then, nations across the world have stepped in to send financial and military aid. The war continues, but till date, the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, has not fallen. And more than 10 months into Russia's war in Ukraine, the United Nations Refugee Agency has stated that there have been more than 7.8 million refugees across Europe. The United States witnessed a spate of gun massacres in 2022 and one of them was the nightmare at an elementary school in Ovalde, Texas. At least 19 children and two teachers were killed in one of the most deadliest school shootings in the United States. An armed 18-year-old entered the campus, barricaded himself in a classroom and opened fire. The suspected gunman was 18-year-old Ovalde resident Salvador Ramos. Hollywood actor and Ovalde native Matthew McConaughey broke down in the White House while speaking about gun control laws in the country. In a historic yet regressive decision with huge consequences and massive implications for the health of those residing in the United States, the Supreme Court overturned the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling. This means that officially the right to abortion was no longer a right for women. It was overturned by a majority conservative Supreme Court with a final tally of six for overturning the ruling and three against. After this, more than 10 states had trigger laws that immediately outlawed abortion as per the top court's ruling, what followed was mass protests across the United States. And Shinzo Abe, Japan's former Prime Minister, was assassinated on July 8th this year after he was shot twice during an election speech in Western Japan's Nara city. After getting shot, Abe collapsed and suffered a cardiac arrest. The suspect named Tetsuya Yamagami, a former member of the Maritime Self-Defense Force, was tackled and taken into custody. Shinzo Abe was airlifted to the hospital where doctors tried their best to save him but eventually pronounced him dead. A close friend of Shinzo Abe, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared July 9th as a day of mourning in India, with flags across the country being flown at half-mast. Shinzo Abe was the longest-serving Prime Minister in Japanese history. Sri Lanka's fate took a massive hit with the worst economic crisis ever. Severe inflation, daily blackouts, a shortage of fuel, domestic gas and other essential goods led to mass protests across Sri Lanka. The visuals of the presidential palace sustaining a massive breach with hordes of people surging and storming to the compound and ransacking it gripped the world with shock. Caught on a sticky wicket, Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled the country and Mahinda Rajapaksa moved to Hambantota with his family. Ranul Vikramasinghe took oath as the Prime Minister promising to resuscitate the country's economy. The famous South Asian tourist destiny is left to the mercy of funds from generous countries and a bailout package from the International Monetary Fund. Now, on August 12th, controversial author Salman Rushdie was attacked before he was about to give a lecture in Chautauqua in New York. He was stabbed multiple times and was put onto a ventilator in the hospital. While he was being treated, he ended up losing sight in one eye and the use of one hand after this tragic attack. The 24-year-old Hadi Matar was charged the following day with assault and attempted murder of fatwa against Rashti had been issued earlier in the year 1989 after his novel titled The Satanic Verses was released. Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini had issued the fatwa saying the novel insulted Islam 
and offered a bounty of $3 million for its fulfillment of the death sentence. After the reigning, after reigning for 70 years, Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest-serving monarch, passed away on September 8th in 2022. Born in April 1926, Queen Elizabeth II died peacefully at the age of 96. She succeeded the throne after her father, King George VI, passed away in February of 1952. Condolences poured in from across the world and residents of Britain sang God Save the Queen outside Buckingham Palace when they learnt of the news. Her eldest son, then Prince Charles, became the king soon after her death. Iran was rocked by the biggest protest since 1979 after the death of Masa Amini in September. The country's morality police, tasked with enforcing strict codes around dress and behaviour, had arrested the 22-year-old for not wearing her hijab correctly. She died after being allegedly beaten up in custody. The death gave rise to one of the most significant global outrages seen in decades. Women across Iran rose up in protests, even globally. They refused to wear hijabs and openly chopped their hair after violently cracking down on dissent and killing over 500 women and children. Iran ended up abolishing the so-called morality police. And this year in October, Rishi Sunak became the United Kingdom's third Prime Minister in a span of seven weeks. The mega-rich ex-banker and former Chancellor in the UK government is the first person of colour to lead the United Kingdom. He began his political journey when he became the Richmond MP in 2014 and was born in Southampton in 1980 to Indian parents. He was also the first Indian origin head boy at Winchester College. He took over the reins of the UK from Liz Truss after her shambolic 45-day tenure, which is the shortest ever tenure for a UK Prime Minister. Liz Truss had become UK's Prime Minister after Boris Johnson had stepped down, a product of scandal after scandal that rocked his tenure. This year, Pakistan witnessed a political and constitutional crisis as opposition parties filed a no-confidence motion against then Prime Minister Imran Khan in April and successfully ousted him. Khan was replaced by Shabazz Sharif, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz party leader and brother of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Khan accused former Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa of playing a double game against his government. Months later in November, the cricketer turned Prime Minister faced an attempt at his life when he was shot in the leg while addressing people in Pakistan's Punjab province and just days later, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif appointed General Asim Munir as Pakistan's next army chief. China held its biggest show of military power in the air and seas around Taiwan in August this year. The tension between Taiwan and China followed a visit to the island by Speaker of the U.S. House, Nancy Pelosi. She was the highest-ranking U.S. politician to visit China, uh, Taiwan since the year 1997. China then warned of strong measures which came in the form of over 400 PLA planes crossing into Taiwan's airspace, ballistic missiles being fired into the waters and more. The Biden administration has approved a potential $180 million arms sale to Taiwan and amid ongoing tensions between the island and Beijing. Now, Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter, the world's largest microblogging platform, was not your standard corporate acquisition to say the least. Filled with twists and turns, flip-flops, the story was in the headlines for most of the year and still continues to be. On November 8th, the United States midterms also took place. These votes are held every two years and they fall in the middle of the president's four-year term of office. Midterms often serve as a verdict on how the president is doing and the party that holds the White House tends to lose seats. As per tradition, the Republicans took control of the House of Representatives after they passed the threshold of 218 seats, but the Democrats have retained control of the Senate by gaining the state of Pennsylvania from the Republicans. American basketball player Brittany Griner, who travelled to Russia to play in the off-season, ended up as a high-stakes diplomatic battle between the two countries, Russia and the United States. Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison for possessing a small amount of hashish oil, which is illegal in Russia. After months of negotiation, Griner was released as part of a prisoner swap between the United States and Russia. The US had to give up the Russian arms dealer, Victor Boot, in exchange for Griner. 
Armed clashes between India and China were reported in Arunachal Pradesh, Tawang sector on December 9th. Both sides reportedly engaged in a face-off that led to minor injuries from both sides. More Chinese soldiers were injured in the clash. Strangely, hours after China released a statement claiming that the situation at the border is stable, China made false claims that Indian troops illegally crossed the border and obstructed Chinese troops leading to the clash. Subsequently, the US White House and Pentagon announced that they were closely monitoring the situation. It was the first major clash between the two sides since the Galwan Valley clash in June of 2020, where 20 Indian soldiers had lost their lives. And speaking of China, three years after COVID-19 was first detected in Wuhan and just a week after the nation made changes to its rigid zero COVID policy, COVID reared its ugly head once again in mid-December. Shops, restaurants and streets were left empty. There are shocking visuals and reports emerging of overwhelmed hospitals and crematoriums and for a place that until earlier this month assiduously tracked every case, there is now no clear data on the extent of the virus's spread. Media reports claim that there are over 5,000 deaths being recorded on a daily basis. China has also been setting up more ICUs and trying to strengthen hospitals in the wake of the surge and the lack of a zero COVID policy to fall back on. And despite the surge, China is also dropping travel restrictions. Indian origin Leo Varadkar took over for the second time as Ireland's Prime Minister under a rotation deal. The government faces a daunting set of challenges including a housing crisis, soaring energy costs, an overstretched healthcare system and thorny post-Brexit relations with the United Kingdom. In an acceptance speech, Varadkar promised to tackle the housing and cost of living crisis during the remainder of the government's term offering hope and housing economic opportunities and a fair start for all. And Benjamin Netanyahu returned to power in a sixth term as Prime Minister of Israel, this despite fighting corruption charges in court. He has already served as Prime Minister longer than anyone in Israeli history, leading the country from 1996 to 99 and 2009 to 2021. Last week, the most right-wing government in Israel's history was sworn in. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday welcomed the return of Netanyahu as head of the Israeli government, noting an intention to strengthen the cooperation with Israel. And here's a quick look at how the world was affected by natural disasters in the year 2022. The year 2022 has been especially tough on Europeans, even in terms of natural disasters, even after a devastating war, the mostly moderate weathered continent witnessed an unprecedented heat wave and exceptionally soaring temperature for over three months. And that led to the worst drought the continent has witnessed since the Middle Ages. The WHO has estimated that at least 15,000 people died specifically due to the heat wave across Europe. And this year's monsoon season floods left a trial of devastation across South Asia. According to UN estimates, 46 million or more people have been affected by torrential rains and extreme monsoon weather across India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Pakistan. Flash floods, landslides and rivers that burst their banks, killing thousands and have stranded many thousands more. Millions have been left homeless. These were the worst floods in more than a decade for India, while Bangladesh still requires recovery assistance. But Pakistan was the worst hit, with over 2.5 million people affected by floods and rains that followed cyclones in June. And Indonesia experienced two earthquakes over the last two months. A deadly magnitude 5.6 earthquake shook the town of Cianjur in mountainous West Java on November 21st with a final death toll that crossed 330. Over 56,000 houses were damaged in this earthquake. Indonesia sits on the ring of fire, a band around the Pacific Ocean that sets off frequent earthquakes and volcanic activity, one of the most seismically active zones on the planet. It stretches from Japan and Indonesia on one side of the Pacific to California and South America on the other. An earthquake of 6.1 magnitude hit Indonesia's West Java province in the beginning of December, but the damage and loss to human life was minimal 
Unseasonal rainfall resulted in flash floods and landslides across several provinces in Afghanistan as well. And this caused the deaths of more than 180 people, displacement of at least thousands, and damage of at least 3,000 houses as well. The United States is witnessing the blizzard of the century. On Christmas Eve, over 300,000 homes and businesses were without power. But what's more alarming is that over 60 people have died across eight states owing to being stuck inside cars or even getting into accidents. The prolonged blizzard has hit Buffalo and New York especially hard. The deadly weather is expected to continue through the new year. And with that, it's time to slip into a quick break, but we'll be back with global highlights from the world of sports and entertainment. Don't go anywhere.